Chapter 39, Pinpointing the Day of the Lord. The Day of the Lord is addressed predominantly within the Old Testament, but mentioned by name in three New Testament passages. Contextually, these three New Testament references offer tremendous insight concerning the duration and the timing of the Day of the Lord. Based upon these references, one can understand that, one, the Day of the Lord is introduced with signs just prior to the Lord's second coming. Joel 2.31, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Acts 2.20, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Number two, the day of the Lord lasts 1,000 years when considering the spiritual application given by Peter. 2 Peter 3.8, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Number three, the day of the Lord concludes with the burning up of the present heaven and earth. 2 Peter 3.10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. The chart on page 584 is titled, Onset of the Day of the Lord. Much like the Hebrew day made up of evening and morning, the day of the Lord begins with night, spiritually speaking. Number four, the day of the Lord is a time of darkness rather than light, Amos 5, 18 through 20. Amos 5, 18, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Number five, the day of the Lord opens with destruction. Isaiah thirteen six. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Jeremiah forty six ten. For this is the day of the Lord, God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood, for the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Number six, the day of the Lord is a result of God's wrath and fierce anger. Isaiah 13, 9, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Number seven, the day of the Lord is in response to the controversy of Zion. Isaiah 34, 8, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Although this night of suffering may seem long to those who endure it, God's wrath will swiftly give way to the rising of the Son of Righteousness, the Lord Jesus Christ, with healing in his wings, Malachi 4.2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. All things considered, the day of the Lord holds much more light and hope for Israel than the short period of despair. Although it opens with God's wrath upon earth's inhabitants, it swiftly yields to the Lord's deliverance and establishment of his earthly millennial kingdom. It is a day when the Lord is in charge on earth. It is his day. He is the judge, the king, the prophet, and the priest. Children of the day versus children of the night. All things considered, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 provides the greatest detail concerning the church's blessed hope, the rapture. But the context immediately shifts in the next chapter. This shift is twofold. Number one, a shift in events from the blessed hope, 1 Thessalonians 4, to the day of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 5. And two, a shift in applicable people groups discussed below. The Apostle Paul was adamant that the believers in Thessalonica not be ignorant concerning the blessed hope, 1 Thessalonians 4.13, but followed by stating their personal lack of need concerning details of the day of the Lord. In fact, to understand the inclusion of such information, one must take note that chapter 5 addressed another group of people indirectly, one that desperately needed to understand Paul's writing concerning the day of the Lord. Paul referred to them as those who are of the night or of darkness, 1 Thessalonians 5.5. 5. The distinction of audience in chapter 5 is crucial. Paul addressed the saved directly, you, and referred to the lost, those of the night, indirectly, they. What is the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord commences when the Lord steps into time, thrusting his will upon earth's inhabitants. This direct involvement in earthly events will become obvious when the Lord leaves heaven's glory at the second coming, 
with his armies following him to conquer his earthly foes, Revelation 19, 11 through 14. Following the second coming, the Lord will establish his earthly and millennial kingdom, fulfilling the prayer of Matthew chapter 6, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This direct implementation of the Lord's will on earth is the day of the Lord. Although the day will last throughout the millennial kingdom, it starts as a destruction from the Almighty causing men's hearts to melt. Isaiah thirteen six. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. This description ties together with Luke chapter 21 and its parallel passage, Matthew chapter 24, and is obviously not a reference to the blessed hope of the church. In fact, the church is not even in view in these passages from the gospel books. Luke 21, 25, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh three specific events before the day of the lord as a warning to those who will inhabit the earth during daniel's seventieth week the lord provided ample insights as to the arrival of the day of the lord in fact, there are three major and specific events that must take place prior to the onset of the day of the Lord. Number one, the moon shall be turned to blood before the day of the Lord, Joel 2.31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. The moon is turned into blood before the day of the Lord, and this literal blood moon happens at the opening of the sixth seal, Revelation 6.12. And I beheld... When he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. The fact that the sixth seal does not take place until the end of Daniel's 70th week reveals why the so-called blood moon hype a few years back was nothing but a farce. It caused confusion and ridicule, and understandably so, since the moon never became as blood, and the timing was all wrong. Number two, Elijah, one of the two witnesses, will come before the day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This timing is also easily pinpointed as Elijah is one of the two witnesses during Daniel's 70th week, Revelation 11, 3 through 8. Number three, the day of the Lord will not take place until after the tribulation of those days, Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. The timing of this context is also easily pinpointed. According to the next verse from the Olivet Discourse, the inhabitants of the earth shall see the Son of Man coming, and he shall send his angels, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other, Matthew 24, 30, and 31. Interestingly, there's no one leaving earth at this time, no rapture, and the gathering is only for Israel's restoration, regeneration, and resurrection. The gathering of the elect includes Israelites from all over the earth where they have been scattered. I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land, Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty-one. The nation will be united and is promised so shall they be my people, and I will be their God, Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty-three. A united Israel will have one king, and David, my servant, shall be king over them, Ezekiel thirty-seven twenty-four. Christ returns with armies on the day of the Lord as a thief. Unlike the church's blessed hope, the beginning of the day of the Lord is not associated with comforting believers, but with the execution of the Lord's vengeance against his enemies. Isaiah 2, 12, Isaiah 13, 6, and 9, Isaiah 34, 8, Isaiah 46, 10, Lamentations 2, 22, Ezekiel 13, 5, Ezekiel 30, verse 3, Joel 1, 15, Joel 2, 1, 11, and 31, Joel 3, 14, Amos 5, 18 through 20, Obadiah 1, 15, Zephaniah 1, 7, 8, 14, and 18, Zephaniah 2, 2, and 3, Zechariah 14.1, Malachi 4.5, Acts 2.20, 1 Thessalonians 5.2. Each of these passages announces that the day of the Lord involves destruction, howling, cruel wrath, fierce anger, 
desolation, vengeance, recompense, terrors, the Lord's anger, cloudy day, time of the heathen, alarm trumpets, trembling, great and very terrible day, sun turned into darkness, moon into blood, darkness, day of the Lord's sacrifice, punishment, bitter crying, dreadful day, and that all of this is coming as a thief upon an unsuspecting, unrepentant world, Revelation 9, 20 and 21, Revelation 16, 9 through 11. The day of the Lord will encompass the Lord's day of vengeance upon his enemies and continue through the Lord's 1,000-year reign upon the earth, Second Peter three ten. The heavens passing away and the formation of the new heaven and new earth, Revelation 21, 1. The confusion is compounded by those who fail to distinguish between the day of the Lord and the day of Christ. This description of catastrophic destruction surely does not equate to the day of Christ, 2 Thessalonians 2, 2, Philippians 1, 10, Philippians 2, 16. The association between Christ's second advent and the coming of a thief offers a spiritual picture of the literal event. According to Joel 2, 9, the Lord's army, which consists of saved saints from heaven, according to Revelation 19, 14, will enter in at the windows of the houses of the Lord's enemies like a thief. The Lord also reminded the Thessalonian believers that they knew perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. In a similar context, Simon Peter warned that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, 2 Peter three ten. The Lord Jesus identified the applicable event when he promised, Behold, I come as a thief, and admonished, Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Revelation 16, 15. When the Lord returns at his second advent, he will come upon an unsuspecting and ill-prepared world. The chart on page 589 is titled, Who is Coming as a Thief? Although New Testament saints will take part in the day of the Lord, it will be from a much different perspective and a much different role than those of the Jews or the unsaved Gentiles. The church as part of the armies of the Lord will return with the Lord Jesus as he comes to establish his kingdom. We will participate, although to varying degrees, in the millennial reign. We will certainly take part in the day of the Lord, but that day will not overtake us as a thief. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4. Because we have already been gathered to the Lord years earlier, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. This is the end of chapter 39.